Hello everyone. Here is a little trick I use in our table for keeping what I call change logs in records. And what that does is every time particular actions that you want to monitor are taken within a record, actions on particular fields, the change log will be updated through an automation in a text field like what we see here. Let's just see that in action. This record here Stage one was ticked complete at 11.51 today. We've got a field showing the time now, which is 1900, seven o'clock. And we're gonna mark that stage two has been completed. So we tick that box there, allow the automation to run. And the record is updated showing us that stage two was completed at 1900. Notice as well, we've still got the previous content of that field, which is that stage one was completed at 1151. So what the automation is doing is every time there's a change, any of the changes that you want to monitor, it's simply adding that to the change log. So let's have a look how that works. We'll take a quick look at the formula field first. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Let's just zoom in on that a little bit. What we're using, if we look at the red text here, is the date time format function, which is taking now, and the function in now will give you the current date and time. And it's putting that in the format of a UK, European time, day, month, year, followed by hours and minutes, the current time. Just a little thing to note about the now function, it doesn't update completely live every minute. In our table, it updates approximately every five to 10 minutes. So if we just go back and look at the function now, it's updated to nine, uh, 705, uh, but it's not updating every single minute. It won't update again at 706. It will update again in about five minutes time, but uh, 1910. Okay, so just to go back to the formula then, uh, if you look at the black text, I'm also using the set time zone function. And because I'm in the UK, I'm using Europe slash London. It's not essential to use this. It depends on where you are and whether GMT is a factor for you and what time of year it is. And also how accurate you want your date stamps to be. You might simply just want to use this formula, which just takes the daytime format of now and gives you the day, month and year without the time. And that's perfectly fine. But essentially, that's how the now formula works. And what's that, what that does then within the change log is it uses that as a date stamp. So let's take a look at the automation. Here we have the trigger, which is when a record is updated. And I'm looking at the fields, the checkboxes, stage one and stage two. So when either of those is updated, whether it's ticked or whether it's unticked, the automation is going to fire. And then the first condition then is, if stage one is ticked, we update the record. So what we do there, we simply take the record ID, record ID and fill in our table record ID just there, which you can do from this menu. And then you take the fields that you want to update. And here we're using the change log field, which is a long text field. And what we're doing is we're simply copying the previous contents of that field back into the same place. And then we take now, which is our date stamp, that field, and we add in any other information we want to record, which was the stage one is completed. So what happens is that at the time when the stage one field is ticked, the automation will be triggered. It will see that that's what's happened and it will update the record accordingly. And the trick is that inside the change log field, you simply copy the previous contents of that field back into itself. So the first time that you take an action, it will simply copy a blank line. There's nothing there, so it will copy that and then put any other information that you've added into the automation underneath that. And then what we do is we reset the stage one field. So that will take the box that has just been ticked and it will reset it to unticked. And we do exactly the same for stage two. 
So if stage one has been ticked, we update the change log. But if stage two has been ticked, we update the change log slightly differently by once again, taking the Airtable record ID for the field in that table, copying the previous contents of the same field called change log into itself and using the date stamp to show that stage two has been completed and then the field resets. So back in our base then, let's take a look at that in action. Uh, nothing yet in the change log in this record, so I'm going to tick stage one complete. Wait a few seconds for the automation to fire. And there we go. Stage one completed at 19.05 and the field has been reset. So you can get as complicated as you like with this. You might want to add, for example, um, a single select field. And that might be kind of different statuses you might have. So you might have um, pending um, to do uh, complete, something like that. Um, so to do might be your first stage. I like to use uh, the red, yellow, and green for things like this. Um, so you might have three stages to do, pending, or you know, currently um, halfway through, or something like that, uh, and complete. Let's create that field. And in our automation, then we're going to add another condition, which is, again, it's conditional on this record being updated. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we're watching that new field, which is the select field that we just made. So when that's updated, and we select that field called select, uh, and let's say when the status is not empty, because that will fire under any condition as long as you've selected one of those three options. And then we add the action, which is to update the record. Once again, we select our table. We select our record ID from that table. We use our change log field. And into that field, we are going to copy the previous contents. I use shift enter there to create a new line. And we use our now date stamp field, and we can put record updated. And what we'll do there is we'll show whatever the value is that's been chosen from the select field. So if it's to do, it will show record updated to do, pending, record updated pending, and so on. We'll just update our automation. We'll go back into our base and Inside this record, let's select pending. Wait patiently for the automation to fire. And there we go, record updated at 1910, current date stamp, pending. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful. I think you'll see it's quite a powerful little trick you can use to uh, just keep a quick tag, a quick tally on uh, how things are going in particular records. Um, you can also add in things like if you're using a um, collaborator field, it would show the name of the person who's taken that particular action. So if you have multiple people working on a project, it will show their names if you add them into the automation and so on. So please uh, like and subscribe, drop any comments or questions you have below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.